In this video, we're going to talk about how to conditionally apply classes, styles, and attributes uh, to elements in your Ionic 2 applications. In a recent video I did, uh, which I'll link to from this one, I talked a little bit about property binding, uh, event binding, uh, and interpolation. And in this video, we're going to use the concept of property binding again to apply these conditional uh, styles and attributes uh, to elements. So the use case here is if uh, a lot of the time when you're creating your applications, you'll just manually add some uh, class to it or some attribute that you want applied to that element. Uh, but sometimes in the application, you're going to want that to change or depend on some other uh, variable. So what I'm going to show you in this tutorial is how to do that, how we can tie some dynamic data to that class or attribute. So I've already got an application uh, set up here. This is just a blank application and we're going to do something really simple. We're just going to work with a button to apply different things to it. Now you may have seen recently, I put out a blog post on uh, CSS utility attributes in Ionic 2. Uh, so this will be helpful when working with this kind of stuff. Um, these attributes are things that Ionic provide that can help uh, style your elements. And they're just little attributes that you can add on to elements like the button here. Uh, by adding the ion button attribute, it'll apply the ionic styling for buttons. Uh, same with the icon only. If we're only using uh, an icon on the button, this will style that appropriately for that. Since the uh, button element has so many attributes we can use, I'm going to use that as an example. So if I come down to the button section here, I can see a whole bunch of different things that I can uh, use. Uh, so we're going to try apply some of these attributes dynamically in the application. So we'll jump over into the code now. Okay, this is the, the code for the application I've already generated. And what I'm going to do is come into here and I'm just going to create a button. So we'll give it the ionic styling. And let's also go with the outline attribute. So if I just finish off this button here and we take a look at what happens. You can see that the button it uh, just has an outline rather than being a solid button. So if I get rid of that outline and take a look again, we'll see that it's a full solid button. So the scenario we're going to go through here is if we want to, for some reason, conditionally apply that outline attribute. Maybe in your application, you will display an outline if a user hasn't clicked that button yet, but if they have clicked it, you want to display a full solid button. Uh, so to do that, what we could do is set up some variable in here. Now, it doesn't matter where this is. It just needs to be some value we can access somewhere. So it could be living in uh, some object that we're looping through in the template. Um, whatever, wherever the variable is, as long as we can access it in our template, we can use that to conditionally apply that attribute. So I'm just going to create a member variable here called isOutline. That's going to be a Boolean, and I'm going to set it to true. So if I come in here now, and instead of just saying outline, if I use the property binding syntax by using the square brackets around outline, and then set that to be whatever our variable is here. So I'll set it to is outline and save it. And since it's true, we should just see the outline, and we do. But if I was to come in here and change this to false, now the outline attribute is no longer applied. Another example you might use is uh, disabled. So uh, if you want to disable the button from being interacted with, we can add the disabled attribute. Uh, but then to conditionally control that, we do the same thing, use the square brackets around disabled and set that to some uh, value. So we'll just use the is outline again, just so we don't have to recreate another variable. And of course, we'll need to set that back to true to see what it does. And you can see now that uh, we have the outline styling back and it's also grayed out. It might be easier to see actually if I get rid of this outline attribute. Okay, so you can see now it's uh, grayed out and disabled and we can't interact with that anymore. 
So conditionally applying attributes is one thing we can do, but we can also conditionally apply styles as well. So let's say if I wanted to change the background color for this conditionally, I could say again in the square brackets, so we can bind to that property, I could do a style dot background color. And note here that uh, usually like in CSS, we do background color with a hyphen there. But uh, when we're using these properties, uh, we use the camel case, so no hyphens. And the first uh, word is lowercase and the second is capitalized. So we can do style dot background color equals, and we'll call this, uh, we'll just create some variable called my color. So now if we come into here again and define that, we'll set my color as a string, which is, we'll just set it to black and save that. Now if we come and have a look in here, we should see that it's black. I had a feeling that wasn't gonna work. Um, the, there we go, I've got mixing up my American and English here. Um, or American English rather. So let's change that, we'll add a U in there, save it again and let's see if it works now. Okay, cool, now we can see it's black and it's also slightly grayed out actually because we still have the, the disabled styling on. So I might just switch that off if I switch is outline to false, which we're using for the disabled value. And take another look and we should have a darker black and we can now interact with the button again if we wanted to. So you can use that syntax to bind to any uh, CSS uh, property just as long as you uh, use this uh, syntax rather than uh, the usual uh, hyphens that CSS properties usually use. So as well as the styles we can also bind to, and I'm going to get rid of these for now, uh, we can also bind to a class. So if I wanted to conditionally apply some class, uh, we can again use the same syntax with the square brackets. Uh, but instead do class dot uh, some, some class and then we'll set that to a variable we have defined somewhere and we'll just call this apply class. Now if I jump back into here and create that, this class, the apply, uh, the some class class should be applied when the apply class value is set to true. Uh, so now if I jump back in here and we'll just uh, inspect this. And you can see here that some class has been added to the button. So we could then come in here and define that class and make it do whatever we want. Uh, and then we can conditionally control whether or not that class is applied to this button element. Now the final thing I want to cover is how we can conditionally apply multiple classes. So this works well if we just want to have one class, uh, but if we want to apply multiple classes conditionally, we can use ng class. And what this does is allow us to provide uh, an object that defines which classes we want to uh, apply to this button. So again, we use the square brackets and we'll set ng class equal to, we'll just create uh, an object called classes. So if we jump in here now and we create another variable, uh, we're going to create an object and that object is going to define what classes we want to include and what ones we don't want to include. So I'll just create some classes here called, we'll just call them class one, two, and three. So I'll do class one and we'll set that property to true, set class two to false and we'll set class three to true. So if I save that, let's make sure that's all good this time. Uh, we'll jump back into the browser. And once that's finished loading, we're going to inspect that button again. And what we hope to see this time is that the two of those classes were applied and one of them isn't. So if we take a look, we can see we have class one and class three being applied to this button now. And if I look in this object, that's exactly what we wanted. So then we could change that, make those two false, and we'll activate class two. And take another look, and hopefully that change applies as well. Just 
inspect this again. And yes, you can see we just have class two now and the other two classes are gone. So this isn't a very practical example, but hopefully it shows you how you can uh, apply these sorts of things conditionally. And uh, in a realistic scenario, this can come in really handy. Uh, maybe you want to highlight particular things based on some user action or a really good example is disabling the button when they click on it. Uh, I could set up a, a click um, handler on this button here and then I'll have a function that handles whatever happens on that button click and at that time I'll set the disabled attribute to be true and so that way once they click on it they're not going to be able to click on it again if that's what you need to happen in your application say for submitting a form, payment information, something like that. Uh, so this stuff can come in really uh, handy and the syntax to, to make use of it is pretty simple. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.